Oh, your eyes are so beautiful. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Dichi, rhymes with Peachy, and happy almost new year. I, ooh, filmed about two videos for the last video of the year, and I just didn't like either of them. So they got scrapped, um, and last minute I was just like, hey, you know what? I haven't done a Q&A where I talk, uh, you know, basically directly to you guys. So that's what we're gonna do today, and there's a lot of questions about New York versus Texas. So I feel like that might be a good place to start, and then we'll end with Mr. Judy. So shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you guys ever need a website to build a beautiful portfolio or an e-commerce website, they have so many amazing tools to get you started. So if you're curious, you can check out my link in the description below. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial or go to squarespace.com slash saradici for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Okay, let's get into the Q&A. Okay, this isn't gonna work because I gotta film. How's life in Texas? Do you miss New York? Um, New York will always have such a special place in the heart of uh, both John and me, but we're good in Texas right now. Like, it's good to be around family. It's good to just like, I don't know, be in a world where like it, it feels normal, if that makes sense. But New York is, I think, one of the most special cities in the entire world. Um, and a lot of cool young people are still moving there, building there, and I think that's what's so great is like, it's such a great place to spend in your early 20s. I'm only, well only, I guess, I am getting kind of old, I'm 27, and you just get a little tired, and especially when the city you live in uh, becomes the center of a pandemic. <laughs> So I think we got burnt on New York a little bit sooner than I would think if those things did not happen. I was literally prepared to like raise kids in New York. That's how much I loved New York. And then, um, yeah, 2020 stuff changes things. Speaking of that, when's the wedding? Man, that is such a good question uh, because when we got engaged February 2020, timing wasn't the best. We were already looking at venues in New York. I literally found a dress, which is crazy. Um, and then, yeah the world shut down and we just we moved like moving I honestly did not expect moving to be such a stressful uh, event I feel like we're just now recovering from that and so I feel like I definitely want to get married in 2022 um, and we're probably just gonna do something like super low-key I feel like I don't even want to like hassle with it anymore like having an actual big situation maybe we'll just run away to a beach or something and get married that sounds good to me any clues on the guests that I'll have on on that creative life when it's back such a good question so that creative life it's gonna be like a soft launch it's gonna start with me just talking to you guys I'm um, talking about all things uh, finances news we're gonna stay away from politics uh, I mean sometimes we might have to dabble but don't worry I want this to be a space where people are just learning putting a smile on their face and also um, maybe learning some helpful things that have to do with that creative life but once I start getting the interviews going again um, and again we're gonna try to do them live I don't know how the guests are gonna feel about that but I really want to get uh, some of the finance crew on so I want to get meet Kevin I want to get Graham Stefan I want to get Andre uh, so I'm definitely definitely gonna DM them at some point in the next few months. Will you do another Halo Infinite stream? Of course, of course. I'm obsessed with Halo Infinite. It's so fun. So I do those streams on my, I guess, second, third channel. I don't know. I have like an extra peachy channel where I just, it's basically my shit post channel where I just post anything and everything. That's where that will happen if you're interested. What is your favorite thing about your career? Oh, I don't, okay, I guess YouTube is my career. It's weird to say it as a career. My favorite part, I would probably say the people I get to meet. I mean, I would have never have thought that I would be friends, be colleagues with such like elite people. I'm, I'm very blessed to have, a, you know, know a lot of talented people that I can learn from. That's the key with your friends, with the people you hang out, can you learn from them? If the channel did super well, how many people would you be comfortable hiring for a full blown peachy team? Uh, you know, I would love more people even now. I want to keep hiring, but it's a personal problem. It's a bandwidth problem. I, I, you know, I need to hire, I need to hire someone or a company to write training manuals for how I do everything so I can just hire quicker because that does not sound fun to me and I feel like I don't have the time to do it and so I never do it. So then my hiring process isn't as thorough as it could be. Ooh, CJ, this question goes a little bit too deep with how many videos you put out and all of the other things you do, do you ever wish you did something else all the time? If you did something else for your career, what would it be? There was a moment 
there was like a very intense moment, I think in 20, 2018, where I was so tired. I was like so burnt out, y'all. And I remember John and I were in Santa Barbara for like three days. We were trying to have a vacation, which we very rarely do. And I just, I couldn't stop thinking about working and videos. And I literally was like sitting there crying. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just gonna go work for this company, this startup. I, uh, there was like a cool tech startup in New York that I was kind of working with. And I was like, they'll just give me a job and then everything will be better. But then you like take a step back and you know, Building your own thing is overwhelming and it's gonna be hard, but I can't do anything else. If YouTube didn't work out, I really don't think I could work for someone else, work a normal nine to five. I would probably just build something else. Crypto and NFTs in 2022, your thoughts. Um, hmm. Okay, I think it's really weird how much people hate NFTs. Like, so many independent artists, like actual talented artists are making money. Like, it's like the man doesn't like when the individual artist like makes a ton of money. I think it's awesome for that, but I see how things can be really frothy right now and I think a lot of people are gonna get burned. I understand the absurdity of JPEGs selling for millions of dollars. I don't think it's stupid and I love the artists are making so much money. I just think it's twofold. People are gonna get burned and when they do, maybe I can buy a crypto punk. <laughs> Favorite YouTuber? Um, probably Yoon and Yanni Olsen. They're like the only vloggers I still watch and I just like live vicariously through their vlogs. They're just such a cool family. I don't know, they're so cool, they're so cool. And then obviously I watch all the finance YouTubers. Hi. Special. You got me something special? Do you want to answer some questions on the Q&A? Maybe. I'm a bit beat, so I might come off as an idiot. This is like my favorite I'll soda ever. Okay, so we're gonna have John come in and join us for the Q&A. That'll be fun, but before we get into that, thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video and bringing it back to the beginning when I said I filmed two videos before this and sometimes you just don't like your face and you don't like videos you make. Well, the only thing I liked about the video was the Squarespace ad that we filmed because we built an entirely new website for someone that's not me. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And guess what guys, we made a website I'm gonna switch over via the switcher, I'm a pip. We made a website for Elon Musk. <laughs> because a few days ago, we made a video about Elon talking about how he's gonna become an influencer. He's gonna go full-time, be a YouTuber, uh, you know, drop those CEO titles, and we welcome Elon to the space. And I was like, what would his Squarespace website look like? Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful website. Okay, we're gonna full screen. A beautiful inviting image to invite you to the website. I love the bold text. I love the animations of these tweets. It shows that he is an influencer. He tweets a lot. Follow my Twitter. Squarespace has really powerful tools to connect your social media. Um, you can even incorporate a Twitter live feed. So I tweet probably like uh, 20 or 25 times a day. If I wanna incorporate that to my website, it is plug and play, it is super easy. So many featured videos, he does so many interviews, he is out there in the world. What a beautiful thing to see if a brand wants to come along and sponsor his YouTube channel. So it is so great to show your portfolio. No, not that portfolio, the video portfolio. So if you are an artist, a content creator of any kind, you make corporate videos and you wanna show it off or you do wedding photos, Squarespace has so many beautiful templates to just showcase all of your work. They also have really powerful e-commerce tools. They link in between the services you use. You can send out email campaigns to market those products right from Squarespace. And talking about merch, e-commerce, well, he has a ton of merch. Did anyone get that Tesla whistle? I really wanted the whistle, but it was sold out like that. And also they have really powerful integrations with Google Maps. Uh, when I made the Book Blanco website, you know, location is one of the most important things. And so you have a lot of different customizations you can do. So, hey, Starbase, Texas, that's where his rocket ships go vroom vroom. So as you can see, Squarespace is just so powerful. You can do so many things. And hey, if we can just whip up a random website for this random no-name YouTube, 
super in an afternoon, you gotta get your start today. It is super easy to start, it's really quick, and it's really fun once you start moving around the blocks and really figuring out, hey, how do I take this template and really make it my own? It's actually a fun process. So for a free trial, you can go to squarespace.com and to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Sarah that is me. So someone asked, would you ever do an income breakdown? Would love to see John's too. And we were just talking about this. Uh, Sarah's I, would be fascinating. <laughs> I, I just feel like I don't have, I have like a general tech audience. I don't want to like make anyone uncomfortable, but I think transparency in finances is actually a good thing. So if I was in the right place, if I was like on Graham Stephan's podcast, I would share it there. But I don't want to upset anyone Kitty. I actually think yeah. the two worlds go more hand in hand than you think. I mean, if you're able to afford lots of cool tech, then you're probably someone who understands finance decently, right? Right, right. What's up, Kitty Kitty? Would you ever go back to New York? Of course. Yeah, like living? Well, I was taking that as just visiting. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, New York's amazing. It's so fun. Living, maybe if we become rich, 60 year, 60 year olds will move there. How about this? What's, what's the actual budget you would need to justify moving back to New York City? Like, how much money would you actually need, in your opinion? So, to actually live comfortably? I mean, we would need like a budget of like three to five million to buy a home, and then you would need money left over. So, I would say, we would have to have a net worth of like 10 to 15 million, which is just not going to happen. So we'll probably never How live. How insane is that? So I so, agree. So if we, like that's how crazy New York is. So if we move back to New York and you see us buy a place, that means we have hit the jackpot. 2022 goals? Oh, I don't know. Have you not thought about goals? This is the New Year's Eve video. Not really. I just think of goals like that I want to do like now-ish. I don't know. I want to make like a comic, a coloring book, things like that. Yeah. Like my goals are like r things that I can kind of start working on now. Yeah. You're getting your art journey underway. My goals are always the same. It's just to get my ish together because I never do. I'd like a studio space. Okay. Like an office space. That'd yeah. be cool. So that, that's my one goal. Good. If you could summarize your best life advice as a single sentence, what would it be? Stay curious. Whatever you do, keep learning. Stay curious. It'll lead you down the right paths. How did you have an answer for such a big question? <laughs> What's the single piece of advice that will change my life? Uh, I don't know. Um, chase being excited as well. So don't aim yeah. to be happy or anything else. Aim to be excited and that will lead to all the other good feelings. Does Judy make you excited? Judy does make me excited. I woke okay. up this morning like, Judy? <laughs> and petted him. It was cute. That has to do with this question. More kitties? I think one for this condo size is enough. Yeah, I, I'm good with one. I don't want more responsibilities until it's like a child. For every 500 square feet, we'll add one more living creature. Perfect. How did the interview with Zuckerberg come to fruition? Were you nervous? Yeah, I, I was, was nervous. nervous for her. <laughs> <laughs> that was like insane. Um, so I, I, I reviewed their like glasses, right? Or whatever they're called. Um, and none of this is sponsored. No money is passing of hands in between me and our overlords at Meta. And uh, so I like those glasses and I talked to their now CTO. He's gotten into some drama on Twitter lately. <laughs> I don't know. They like never stay out of the news. And then their team was like, hey, that was really cool. Um, we want you to talk to Mark's team. They really want to chat with you. And I kid you not, in the span of only, it was like two days, two or three days, it went from, do you want to interview Mark? To me freaking out and being like, oh my God. And something went through my brain of like, should I even do this? And then I was like, "You're this is a crazy opportunity. Just ask him the questions you would want to ask. And the internet can decide, you know, whatever they want. And they're allowed to have their own opinions. Um, so yeah, I only had, from the day they asked me to win we were doing the interview, I only had like two and a half days. So I just spent those, like I pushed everything aside, came up with questions of what I would want to know, and then it happened. And it was like... Crazy. I, w I, I was nervous until I started talking to him because um, he's actually, believe it or not, very normal in conversation. I don't know other things, but um, yeah, I, I they, yeah. 
they were really cool. I had like a pre-call with him, so I was able to just like chat with Zuck before the interview. So that helped with my nerves. It was but, definitely yeah. the most human Zuck I felt has ever come off was in the interview with you. Yeah. You guys definitely had a good chemistry. Yeah. So. Thank you. Expose your crypto portfolio. It's always been Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then recently I bought Solana because I know they're doing a lot with NFTs and I hate the gas fees with Ethereum. And I still haven't bought any NFTs yet, but I feel like I'm just kind of like waiting for it all to come crashing down. And I would love to buy a CryptoPunk for like 500 bucks. <laughs> but that's, I know that's probably never gonna happen, but it might, it might kitty. Sarah knows more about what my Bitcoin portfolio looks yeah. like than my own. When everything cratered, I was like, John, give me your phone. And I bought you some Bitcoin Ethereum. You sure did. Well. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah. Do you have anything Sadly. else to say? Uh, no, I just want to say your footage looks great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Your videos are really entertaining. They're quick hitting. They're informational, and I appreciate them. Oh, thank this you. This is from a, a fan standpoint, but as a fiance yeah. standpoint, I want to say quit making YouTube videos and just come watch movies with me in the living room and let's take a nap. Oh, I would love that, but I can't. Have okay. fun. Love okay. you. Love you. So guys, going back to that Judy question, I'm gonna end this video with a video that I've probably posted on social already, and it's the story of Judy and his name. So enjoy, like, sub, and check out my Squarespace link down in the description below. Where's this video? It's like a special video. That oh, sweet, I haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah. It's time to tell you the story of Mr. Judy. The Humane Society had a little cat pop up. It's not like we were in the market for a cat, but little Judy, he looked so sad, but he was making eye contact, I feel like with both of us, right? Yeah, he looked into our souls. So we brought Judy home. On the adoption papers, it said his name as July, but we read Judy because the L looks like a D and we were already calling him Judy so much that we were just like, I'm sorry, cat who's nine years old. We're changing your name to Judy. So we bring him home. He's super shy, just like all cats. They hide under things, you know, when they're in a new environment and he had just had all of his shots and things. So he was feeling a little sketched out. He finally ate some. He was really warming up to John. We're like, okay, great. This is awesome. But then he started like having sneezing attacks <laughs> to the point where it wasn't like, oh, bless you, this is so cute how you sneeze. It's like, oh no, this is a problem. He was just like under all of our comforters, like he wouldn't come out, he wouldn't eat. We brought him to the vet, they gave him some shots. At this point, it's like getting very scary because when he started having these sneezing fits, he sneezed and there was like blood. So we go, for the third time in a span of a week. Everyone's stressed out. They gave him this, like another antibiotic shot. And the biggest thing that's an indicator of like, oh my gosh, is he getting better? Is he started eating again. He started sleeping on top of the covers instead of underneath. It took a couple weeks for him to get into the flow, but now, he is, it's just crazy the transformation. He's a nine year old little grandpa, but he doesn't act like it. He is so spunky, he is so playful, he demolished our treat bag. Judy, what did you do? Yo, you know you're guilty. He's a little rambunctious and we love him so much. I edit with him, he sits on my desk with me and he is so vocal. He is the most vocal cat I have ever been around. Oh yeah? I, I literally can't explain the joy that you actually get from a little animal that's yours. I think people are hesitant in adopting adult cats, like they're not worth it, but he fits our lifestyle perfect because we chill a lot and just edit videos and he has just meshed into our life so well because he is so chill too. There's nothing I feel like you should be scared about. Adult cats need love too. And so that is the story of Judy. And if the previous owners are out there, July is doing okay.